Good morning, folks. I'm Long Beach Mayor Rex Richardson. Thanks for joining us once again for our weekly live stream where we provide updates on our local homelessness emergency. Today, I'm joined by Doug Halbert, our Long Beach City Prosecutor. Doug's here to talk with us today about the important work that he and his office are doing to help people and support people experiencing homelessness here in the city of Long Beach. But before we get to today's topic, uh, I want to just share with you some updates. We know that this weekend uh, we prepared for an unprecedented storm event. The city team worked very, very hard to prepare our community for the effects of Hurricane Hillary. And I'm proud to say that we saw minimal impacts here in the city of Long Beach. That's great news. As a part of our efforts, we did a lot of work to expand shelter options for people uh, to help people get out of the storm. We opened more than 150 additional beds in our shelters in our multi-service center. And we prepared additional shelters to meet the need, but uh, we continued to meet the, meet, meet the need throughout the night and we didn't have to expand additional shelter, but we were ready in case we need to do so. Our outreach teams also worked very hard to, you know, all the way uh, uh, to, the, to the evening, uh, working to get um, individuals experiencing homelessness uh, access to shelter. And so we did a lot of outreach there. I want to offer a heartfelt thanks to everyone who worked tirelessly to, to prepare our city as well as all of our amazing city employees and our volunteers who worked to keep our city safe during Sunday's tropical storm. It was a big team effort and uh, we are over time building more and more resiliency uh, to address emergencies from our COVID-19 emergency, uh, our local emergency on homelessness, and if, if we need to come together and, and work together to prepare our city for a storm, we have that ability and that resil resiliency built in. So thank all of you uh, for all your incredible work. So now, let's get back to the topic of homelessness and we'll turn to our guest. Doug, thanks for coming on our little show. Uh, we've worked together for many years um, and we're lucky that we have our own city prosecutor. It's unique. Long Beach has its own independent health department, one of three cities in the whole state. Uh, we've got our local fire, we've got our local police, but we also have a local independent prosecutor. And the city prosecutor's office plays an important role in supporting our unhoused community. And we know there's always a conversation about, uh, can't we just prosecute our way out of this problem? Well, the good news is we have a local prosecutor to help talk us through the things that we can do because uh, we, we've learned and the region has learned you can't prosecute your way out of a, a homeless crisis, but there are things that we can do to be innovative and to adapt if we have a, a heart and a spirit to serve. So, Doug, share a little bit more with us about some of your efforts in your office. Well, sure. And, Mayor, thank you for having me on Absolutely. the show and thank you for giving me a chance to uh, talk about some of the programs that the men and women in my office uh, have, have started and actually become national leaders um, mm -hmm. using uh, these strategies. Uh, and I'm glad that you also mentioned that this is not a strategy to prosecute homelessness or to eliminate pr uh, homelessness through prosecution. Here I look at it really in two different ways. First of all, we have to do a better job within the criminal justice system when a person who is experiencing homelessness intersects with the system. The traditional criminal justice system is not set up to address unemployment or mental disease or, or substance abuse or homelessness. But, but we have an opportunity when a case intersects with our office to actually try to improve a person's outcome right. so that they don't engage uh, in criminal activity. The other way I look at it is this is an emergency. It's a crisis and we really need all oars in the water rowing at the same time and what we do has to be aligned with what the health department is doing uh, and what other agencies are doing and nonprofits are doing in order to really change someone's life and, and, and turn them around. And our motto, as you know, is to help restore a person and return them from the criminal justice system better than they went into it. And often right. that doesn't look like the traditional criminal justice system. It looks like things like homeless court and law enforcement assisted diversion and our priority access diversion mm -hmm. program. All of these are really alternative um, diversionary or alternative sentencing programs that are designed to address the underlying condition that may have resulted in a criminal act. Um, but right. we, we believe the traditional criminal justice system is not well equipped for it. So we've come up with our own strategies and our own solutions. Which is, which is good. And, uh, and I think one of the um, you know, biggest uh, success stories so far is the innovation around your homeless court program. 
Uh, so why don't you walk us th through the Homeless Court program a little bit? Sure. It was about two years ago, uh, County Supervisor Janice Hahn mentioned to me uh, that there is a program that she helped fund in Redondo Beach. Uh, so Redondo Beach actually mm -hmm. had the first homeless court program uh, similar to ours. And we, we went, I know the city prosecutor in Redondo Beach, we looked at what they did and, and we thought that we could do the same thing uh, just as good if not better here in Long Beach. Right. So here's what it looks like. Instead of having certain cases go to the Long Beach Courthouse, we've created a virtual courtroom at the Multi-Service Center. Mm -hmm. So the MSC, which is not downtown, it's a place that serves the homeless community. It's more comfortable. The case managers are there. Um, it's not an intimidating situation. Uh, and it really does two different things. It allows homeless individuals who are already connected to services that are doing really well it allows them to eliminate some of their old um, low-level uh, misdemeanors and infractions, which could create barriers for employment or housing. So someone who's already connected and doing well, we want to remove those barriers, those obstacles, to make it easier to get that person into mm -hmm. long-term supportive housing. The second thing it does is it creates an, an encouragement and an, an, right. it entices people who are not connected to get connected because we tell them we can help them with their warrants, uh, with their low-level criminal conduct. They may have forgot to come to court uh, two years ago. Right. They may have an eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollar fine as a result of that failure to appear, and that thousand dollar fine is an obstacle that's going to, you know, entirely prevent them from getting work and, and getting into uh, getting into housing. But we can work with them and we can eliminate some of those cases so that when they start a new job, they start fresh. We've had people, by the way, who were engaged in services for several months. Yeah. They get a job. They're driving to work one day. They get pulled over and they get arrested for a warrant that was two years old. Yeah. They go to jail. They spend the night in jail. When they come out, they've lost their job. So we've really turned someone back in time. Right to make it uh, a situation that was doing very, very well in, into one that basically resulted in them losing their, their employment. And we've really made it worse for them, but we've right. made it worse for us. We're better off with them being gainfully employed and right. being housed for certain. So Homeless Court started with, with Janice Hahn, and we have a virtual courtroom. Uh, and we've had over 300 people that have been assisted just in the two years since mm -hmm. the pilot program uh, began. Um, those 300 people have had a, a number of things. They've had old warrants removed. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them had cases that were pending in court, and we worked with them. Instead of doing a fine or instead of doing jail time, instead of doing community service, we said stay connected to services. And if you do that for 60 days or 90 days, sometimes it's live-in treatment. I'm so much better off getting someone into live-in treatment for right. 60 or 90 days than having them go to jail for a week or two. It doesn't make sense in the criminal justice system, but right. that's how we, we normally uh, treat them. So um, connecting people to services is super important. Keeping them connected mm -hmm. to services is important. Homeless court in two years has become one of the most important parts of our uh, criminal justice ecosystem here in Long Beach because right. the homeless community knows that if they stay involved in services or get involved in services, they actually could get help that's valued at hundreds or thousands of dollars if, if they stay connected to services. Mm -hmm. And that's our promise to them. So, and I love that, that's our promise to them. Um, you know, I, th I think it's important that you mentioned that, um, you know, our job is to, to go in and make sure people come out of the system better off than they were when they went into the system. And I think when I think about government and systems and structures, state and federal and local, they were a lot of times designed uh, for a different purpose, either to, you know, keep a community safe or to make sure that your business can thrive. But when you're in a crisis and you see that, we all have to, as you say, get our oars moving at the same time. Sometimes it's challenging to get government to see that our job is not always just to put someone in jail, but our job is to help uh, contribute to the solution of getting people off the street and in a place where they're not continually going back to the street. And so uh, the fact that I think you see your role as, uh, as a prosecutor as finding innovative ways to help with all of our collective efforts to get people off the street. Uh, I think that's really, really important um, that, that you see the world that way. Uh, because I, I think this, you know, government's good at building systems and structures, uh, but we're not good at changing or not good at tearing down those systems and structures when we see that they, they don't work. And this is a moment where we have to really reimagine what all of our, our jobs are. 
when I ran for mayor, I, you know, I, it wasn't that I wanted to, you know, do a homeless li a live stream on homelessness every Tuesday, but that's the job that we need mm -hmm. to do because mm -hmm. it's hard to aspire to some of your, you know, your, your goals as a city if you can't address this issue of homelessness and it has a direct correlation to, to, uh, to safety. Let me ask you uh, about something else. So technology plays a big role in how we're out conducting outreach. And uh, I remember a long time ago, you know, you came up with a platform uh, that helped the police department with navigate gang injunctions. Mm -hmm. and, and now you've come up with uh, another program, the Guides app with Laserfish. Yes. And uh, talk a little bit about the Guides Act and the Guides app, and that's helping uh, how that's helping us to do better outreach. Yeah, and, and to follow up on what you said, government is really good at creating programs that are mm -hmm. siloed within separate departments. And rather than recreating a program in another department, just having them, them communicate and right. be aligned is so much more efficient and, and strategic. So technology is a way that you can align people um, with resources. Right. So it wasn't actually my idea. It was a police officer named Chris Samora came up with an idea. He said, uh, you know, police officers... Um, they're, they're very well trained in a lot of different things, but they need more resources, they need more information. An officer that has more information before him has more options. And his theory was that if police officers had the ability to quickly refer someone to services or to check to see if they're already in services right. and then reconnect them, uh, his theory was that officers would have a new opportunity, a, a new option. Right now, that they, of course, can arrest someone, they can issue a citation, mm -hmm. they can tell the person to move along and, and clear out the call. Well, the Guides app, uh, developed by Laserfish, which is a company, it's a global company, but right. based, here, based in, here in Long Beach, um, they worked with us, they saw the vision, and they worked with Chris and Mora, and we designed uh, a very simple application that would allow police to access um, which individuals are currently involved in a prosecutor-led diversion program, or if they're not in a program, to connect them to a program. Um, so we, we came up with a three button app. It starts with the landing page. There's a picture of it on the screen with a very simple uh, couple of presses of a button. An officer can identify if someone's already been connected to services through one of our programs. If they have been, we can easily reconnect them right. to their case, case manager. Worker. If they're not connected, why don't we make it easy for an officer to input some information and hit submit and allow a healthcare response to that contact. That way the officer can go on to his next call. He's already uh, c you know, identified the individual and sent the information to, mm -hmm. to us and the health department. So the Guides app really allows us to do that. By the way, it was funded 100% by the United States Department of Justice. We applied for a grant, we won the grant, and now we have, a, we have an app that allows officers to, to open up information so they have at their fingertips information about mental health services that right. are available locally, substance abuse services available locally. Uh, they also have the ability to refer someone. And on the screen is the actual um, field that an officer would see when they want to refer someone. They start putting in basic information, their first name, last name, the location, uh, the type of call it is. And once they hit submit, it immediately starts this process. Um, I have a social worker in my office. A lot of right. people don't know this. Uh, we, we have a, a person who's a, a trained social worker. She's run shelters in Orange County and here mm -hmm. in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. And so she's perfectly positioned. Obviously, we want to check the person's background. We're not going to send someone who's dangerous uh, into, a, into a home that might endanger other people. But if they're appropriate for the LEAD program, which stands for Law Enforcement Assisted Diversion, we connect them to a social worker right there from the street level uh, contact, try to get them into either right. uh, you know, temporary housing or supportive housing that's for mental health or right. for substance abuse. The long-term goal is to create a better contact by that officer and that individual and help address the underlying condition without having to send the case to court and, and get a judge involved and, mm -hmm. and all the costs that, that follow from that. So if anybody wants more information, by the way, our website is www.cityprosecutordoughalbert.com. And there's information about homeless court there. You can actually refer someone to homeless court. If you're mm -hmm. a caseworker and you want one of your, your clients to be considered for homeless court, you can uh, input that person's information and it comes to us. 
Uh, also, there's information about the Guides app. There's information about the Law Enforcement Assisted Diversion Program and all the other diversion programs. Right. In fact, you've helped us create some of our diversion mm -hmm. programs uh, over the years. So the PATH program. The PATH program is a, a great example. Um, mm -hmm. You actually uh, connected with some Department of Justice leaders mm -hmm that uh, really uh, explain to us the need to work on those young adults That's right. uh, before they get into trouble and try to connect them to employment services. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking to restart that, by the way, with Long Beach City College. It Incredible. paused during COVID, uh, but we're going to start it with a new partner, and I think it's going to be better than ever. Fantastic. Well, Doug, I, you know, I think uh, you explained why, you certainly justified why it's important to have an, a local prosecutor because we're able to uh, address things more comprehensively and within the context of the resources that we have in our community, we're able to work together and coordinate. You know, there's a lot of conversation, again, about um, the complexities of, of prosecution, the shifting legislative landscape in California. But we want to offer hope that although, uh, sure, rules may change and it may be uh, difficult to understand, we have great leaders in Long Beach who are figuring out ways to navigate and to keep communities safe. If, if an individual needs help, let's get them help. Uh, but if, if, if a crime happens, we still have the ability to keep our community safe. They're not mutually exclusive. In fact, they're two sides of the same, same coin. We want to help people and we want to keep our community safe. And so we're fortunate that we have uh, you know, an entire team, um, our prosecutor, our public safety, our um, police departments heading toward more community policing with neighborhood services bike teams and you know community service assistants. We had Shalina Benson, commander, come walk, walk us through some of those sort of innovations within our police department. We're doing things like ambassadors in our parks and recreation department. We have innovation taking place at our prosecutor office. So this is all about, about allowing our city to change to meet uh, the evolving needs. And so uh, our homeless emergency response is certainly an interdepartmental effort that requires every part of our city team to be involved. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and thank you, uh, Doug, for, for coming on our little show. Uh, and now we'll proceed with interpretation in Spanish and Kamai. Thank you. Gracias por acompañarnos por nuestro programa en vivo semanal, donde proporcionamos actualaciones sobre nuestra emergencia de personas indigentes. Hoy me acompaña Doug Hubert, el fiscal de la ciudad de Long Beach. Don, Doug está aquí para hablar sobre el trabajo que él y su oficina están haciendo para apoyar a las personas sin hogar en Long Beach. Antes de llegar a, al tema de hoy, este fin de semana nuestro, nuestra ciudad pasó por un evento sin precedentes. El equipo de la ciudad trabajó duro para preparar a la ciudad para los efectos del huracán Hillary y estamos felices de informarles que vimos impactos mínimos en Long Beach. Como parte de nuestros, esfuerzos, de nuestros esfuerzos, hicimos un gran trabajo para ampliar opciones de refugio para ayudar a la gente a salir de la tormenta. Hemos abierto más de 150 nuevas camas en nuestros refugios y en el centro de servicios múltiples y preparamos refugios adicionales para cubrir las necesidades. Nuestros equipos de divulgación también ar trabajaron arduamente para hacer contacto con las personas necesitadas de refugio. Me gustaría dar las gracias de todo corazón a todos los que trabajaron para que esto suceda, así como a todos nuestros increíbles empleados de la ciudad que trabajaron para mantener la, la ciudad segura durante la tormenta tropical del domingo. Ahora, volviendo a nuestro invitado, gracias, Doug, por acompañarnos el día de hoy. La oficina del fiscal de la ciudad juega un papel importante en apoyar a nuestra comunidad sin vivienda. ¿Puedes compartir más sobre su oficina y sus esfuerzos? Doug Hubbard, ser fiscal municipal es un trabajo único. Solo 13 ciudades tienen la capacidad de hacerlo. Así que podemos ser creativos. La capacidad de, de hacer esto para que podamos ser creativos como el programa PAF, por sus siglas en inglés. ¿Cómo surgió el Tribunal de Personas Desahuciadas de Vivienda? Janice Hahn 
nos trajo la idea. Antes teníamos el programa eh, Priority Access Diversion PAD, por sus siglas en inglés, en español, Desvío de Acceso Prioritario. Iniciamos el primer programa de desviación as asistida por la aplicación de ley LED, por sus siglas en inglés, en California. Alcalde Rex Richardson, los servicios que estás prestando a través del programa del tribunal de los indigentes son tremendos. Después de dos años, ¿qué tipo de, impact de impacto has visto? Doug, desde junio del 2021, 307 participantes del Tribunal de Desamparados, 231 delitos menores y 278 infracciones desestimadas. 112 individuos conectados a servicios de limpieza de antecedentes o registros. 731 órdenes de arresto eliminadas. Alcalde Red Rex Richardson. El programa de tribunal para personas sin hogar no es su única iniciativa. Puede hablarnos también de la aplicación Guides lanzada recientemente. Doug, historial de la aplicación Guides, guías en español. Alcalde Rex Richardson, gracias Doug. Nuestra respuesta de emergencias a la falta de vivienda en esfuerzos interdepartamental que requiere que cada equipo de la ciudad participe. Gracias por acompañarnos hoy. Ahora procedemos con la interpretación en Kamar. Pasum Chibisu Bomb Own, Tangakani, Dial Kampung, Tatam Dan, Slap Nung Tesanaka, Sai Top Tall, Pajam Sapadas, the MP, the Mosrai, Nung Karok, the Mosrai, Tang Panyabi Bat, Nay Pibanatan, the Tikrong Long Bit of Yung. Tiny look up about Krong Rex Richardson, mean Pium Room, Major Room, Dal for the mean Rabah Yung, the Tiny Kinuku look the class Hobart, the Chi Rodanya, Krong Long Bit. Look the class Martin in the tiny kid and by Jim Ripchun Wamp on PK card, a quart, Nung Karia Lai, a bakot, compung twerk, Nunca chewy, or bump on Pichi brought you, Dal compung run, no knong satan, a pibana tan, a tikrong long way. Karia Lai right and yakrong, Niku dal two and the teas and can moon, Nukunka chewy, dal sakum, dal commune test and buying the boy young. Bakaria Lai right and yakrong long way, mean peep pisa, dal pacani twer, I put quart, mean peep chnipe, but did the crunkang here. Và chung với thay vì cả trong đại tổ tư ban sự nghiệp sự thay ban này cứ từ lá cả đại đất rai bàn nhà chủ nhân đàn thang này thì công lòng bình này ban tổ tư thay vì cả tổ trung pin nhà mới cả khó trời công đồng bằng Los Angeles cứ nhà rai Janice Han cùng rung từ lá cả đất rai bàn nhà chủ nhân đàn thang này thì công lòng bình này cứ chia sầm pon đại cụ khnien muối rồi viên cả nhà lai rồi đại nhà công lòng bình này vừa cái thang số khapi bao công lòng bình nâng cả nhà lai mi thị vi cả pia cái đại sa thi nhà rồi bắt đầu bằng Los Angeles Nung Anka, Sivas and Kum, Dial Bumbra, Siva, Chui, Pichi Broad, Dial Kumpung, the Runa Knong, Satana Pia, and Nathan, the Kronti Krong Long Bit of a Yung. Kobum Nong Rabot, the Laka, Ruko Kumrung, the Laka, Dostrai Panya, Chun and Nathani, Kudam Bay Chui, Dal Net, the Kumpung, the Runa Knong, Satana Pia, and Nathan, Dial Kumpung, the Chop Chum Pet, Wendang Rung Kadai Promoton, Nung Traka Chum Nui Pratch Babchi Champ Bite. Then Tim Nikum Ronik or Chui Psap Chop Junanat had them in Panya Promoton, Tunnings Sevasum Kansum Kan, Chi Cham Bite Dam and I Quack Ban, Ku Chi Seva do Chi Karo Lum No Tan, Attap Rajoy Pnight Pigar of Peep, Pratchum Nui Pnights on the Socks and Gum, Nung Sevasoko Peep Lodget, Nung Kapi Kruja Bald and Babe and Sap Kring Yin. By Chap Tang Tapi Bag the Naka, Kapi came into Nachan and Peep Pom, a pay moo in Mok, put quats and gate curing me and some of the potty charan, do can crown me. But the Mukus of Nom Rink, they got a nature and a tan, they lang dot the laka, mean dull to Bayroy Pram Pinet. Some Nom Rink, but my chum, dial, but the moon my chum chum, Piroy, my pay moo, some two Piroy Sams of Mukat and Nain, some Nom Rink, but La Hoot, Rick, but the Moto Tachum, Piroy Jats upon Baykat and Nate, Trail Ban, look like a chop again. Mean Manuchum Nun Mareda P. Net Banto Tosevachum Rap Pip a lap alone, the Knong come not hide or crud. They cut the lacachum Nun from Pulroy Samson, we got a night, throw banchum rap like thread. 
bà hai đầm bay thay chỉ chuột chơi nâng sầm lúa đào cang như là bạc luôn nâng con cang như này cả giờ lại loại nhà còn lồng bịch nít cứ phụ kế prai cam bị thi mui khi chỉ cam bị thi electronic đã nằm pleasure phụ kế chmu tha the guys app đã chỉ bị thiên tham mây mui sầm lấp chui đào cầm loại nhà còn lồng bịch đầm bay dọc mà prapa nâng con cá chui nẹt đào cầm phong thay luôn nâng con sát thanh nạp hiệp anh ta nâng con cam bị thi nằm pleasure the guys nít cứ đặt nằm đầy lô loại nhà còn lồng bịch the class hobert đầy toal đầy cam bị thi nít miền bằng pẹp bờ miền trăm bách sầm lấp nẹt chay to từ nâng bảy nhà đầm bay phụ quát ai đặt sai việc bàn pleem pleem chia bị sai nâng con cá cầm nát ta ta sẽ vào với khá đầy xong sầm bằng phớt sầm lấp chay to từ nâng sạch đầy trời cao bạc chìa bọt và các vị thi này cứ chia cho tất cả đại phương từ lớp và trai và chia nâng miền phía trên này và đất sầm lấp sạp chuột nè đại miền bắc nhà hà là thá đại miền bắc nhà hà chủ yếu phơi chất nâng nhiên thanh nấm ở tổ tu ban sẽ vào xóm xóm nâng bản to tam đam phá sẽ vào nơi chỉ phải chăm chun phụ quạt và chỉ rúm cái cá rộng đầm nóc sài nơi khung kìm miền bị bắt nơi phía bên nam hà này cứ chia cá khom đất đai đất trường bị cướp ăn trả nợ yêu cả than đại thuê cả nhà đầm bấy ở miền bắc thành phố những chỗ chế cứ trở phăng ác sai từ lời cướp hành động ở nơi cầm cang như là bắt lạc cầm dương ở châu rùm từ ở khnề và dương châm sông ở quân lợn nướng đại ban tam đan sắp đặt những tài sản cáp sai bắt tập toán và chăm sóc đào bắt dương và sông chuyển biến